Retroactive is a 1997 release science fiction thriller directed by Louis Morneau. We start with Frank Whaley's character, Brian, who is uh, a scientist working at a, facility, a government facility, like a particle accelerator kind of thing, uh, like the Large Hadron Collider. We see him arrive at work and he's got a little mouse in a case. You know, he's clearly doing experiments and he kind of talks us through it and we see him doing various things on a computer and, and, and making calculations. He puts this mouse in a, in a kind of maze where it eventually gets caught in a mouse trap at the end and dies. And then he puts it on this platform, does some jiggery-pokery on a computer. There's some lightning and some spinny, whirry camera movements. We're back, you know, ten minutes previous, and he's walking into the facility again. And he does the sa- all the same stuff again. But this time the mouse remembers that it died, so it doesn't go into the, uh, into the trap. So there is our time machine basically if you go through the t- that that's the whole purpose of this scene is to show you that if you go through this time machine you remember what's already happened whereas brian doesn't remember because he didn't go through the time machine but he knows how the experiment works so he recognizes the fact that this mouse remembers so knows that it was successful there's a bit more exposition about how basically the this i think there's the pentagon i think is going to close this facility down i mean he's the only person there obviously i assume it's the weekend but considering this is obviously a highly sensitive government facility, there's nobody there, no guards, nothing. He's all on his own, doing whatever the hell he wants. <laughs> we then meet the character of Karen, played by Kylie Travis. We see him flashback, and the radio's on as well, talking about it, and she was a, a police hostage negotiator, and there's been some massive balls up, and she's, you know, I think hostages have died or something. But yeah, it, it, basically she's sort of a disgraced negotiated she's she's left her role and is is traveling on the road in texas you know with these flashbacks are obviously her her memories and that distracts her and uh, as there always is in these films there's a big truck coming the other way that she doesn't notice even though the road is completely straight and uh, suddenly she finds herself you know trying to avoid this truck and crashing off the road into a big sign and that's it her car's knackered fortunately james belushi or jim belushi whichever he wants to be known as these days and his wife happened to pass and uh, offered to give karen a ride yeah so james belushi's character frank knows someone with a tow truck and offers to to take her while they're in the car it's obvious that that he's a bit frank is a bit of a nasty piece of work and his wife rayanne is you know is a bit put upon and obviously quite scared of him the conversation sort of escalates while karen is in the car to the point where uh, rayanne is killed and then Frank is after uh, after Karen as well. And she happens to, well, she runs into the desert and then happens across this facility where Brian is doing his experiments. And again, you know, secure government facility with obviously highly sensitive equipment, just protected by a flimsy fence that she manages to scale in a few seconds. <laughs> and then she bangs on the door um, and Brian lets her in because, you know, why not? And... <laughs> And she then gets accidentally sent back in time, 20 minutes. So then she finds herself back in the car. Thinks, right, I can do something. I should save Rayanne's life. So, and then that that's where we, you know, we continue. She then attempts to change what's happened, but it just escalates. Every time she tries to, to make it better, it just gets worse and worse. I must say that uh, that was quite the description. And you, the whole bit where, the whole explanation of Frank Whaley in the laboratory at the beginning, masterful. You got through that. You didn't jump. You didn't. You didn't skip once. Didn't didn't miss a beat <laughs> once. Really good, I thought. Well, to be fair, you know the science in this science fiction isn't very sciencey, is it's it? It's not, not very a lot. Sci- no, it's you know, not. it kind of takes a back seat to explosions and bullets. To be honest, it does. It does. Yeah. So this is obviously our second week of uh, time travel movies, uh, a month of time travel movies, and we thought, you know, we're kind of looking at slightly lesser known time travel. Everyone knows Back to the Future. Everyone knows the big ones. Um, but we thought we'd look at some lesser known, lesser known ones, and this is one that I'd seen. I thought I saw this about ten years ago, so I thought, well, let's do this one because this is quite, it's quite unknown. This one, I don't think you'd even heard of it, had you? I hadn't. No, I mean, I think it, it was. I think it got a small theatrical release in the US, but no, it was. I mean, here in the UK, it was I think it was straight to video. But no, I wasn't. I wasn't aware of it. I, I kind of get the feeling you may have summed up your feelings. I don't know uh, about <laughs> it in your in your review. I mean, I think personally, it's kind of. It, it it feels cheap. Hmm. It's badly directed. <laughs> um, it's you're right. There's no science. There's no really time. The time travel machine is pretty much there just to facilitate all the action stuff with Jim Belushi yeah. uh, and the and the other cast members. Frank Whaley's not even even in it that much. But they're having a blast. 
And yeah, yeah. It's quite fun. I, I I've seen it three times now, and every time it's completely over. It's completely stupid. Oh yeah. No, it doesn't agree, make yeah. one bit of sense, but it's a lot of fun. It's kind of it's just. I think it knows it's terrible. Mm. It doesn't take itself seriously, and it's got you know it's it's it, to me it feels a little bit like uh, it's like a cross between the Hitcher and Groundhog Day. I thought mm. uh, it's more. It's probably more ground. It's kind of like a time loop. It's it's yeah. It's yeah. A bit like time crimes. You're right. And in fact, I was going to say it's like a noir Groundhog Day. Like a noir Groundhog Day. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's more <laughs> it's more time loop than time travel. It, it is, yeah, but sort of in it, it, time loop films like Groundhog Day and what was other recent ones, Happy Death Day. There's there's quite a few at the moment actually. There's like Palm Springs is another one, and the Map of Tiny Pretty Things I think is another time loop film. They seem to be on the up at the moment, but anyway, they're usually sort of you're stuck in a time loop, and there needs to be something you have to do to get out of it. Whereas this film is sort of an intentional choice to be to be repeating the same thing over and over again, which is a slightly different take on the time loop. Yeah, genre, yeah, which, which makes it quite interesting, I think. Mm. And I also love that whole... I mean, the, the kind of the premise here is that, you know, if you go back, you're not going to fix it. If you're not careful, yeah. you're going you're gonna to make it worse. And it just escalates. And she just mm. she just gets, like... I mean, she's she's kind of running from... She's had... she's I think she's, she's a psychiatrist and she's worked with the, uh, the Chicago police force. Yeah. And there's been an incident at the beginning. Uh, I think it's like a, a failed hostage... Yeah, uh, maybe. Yeah, was I wrong to say she was a hostage negotiator? I, I think she was remember. working with hostage negotiation, yeah. and there's, there's, something's gone wrong, and six people have died, and she's kind of, kind of getting away. In fact, in fact, at the beginning, she says that uh, I think she's she's got a book. She's Jim. She's got a book, and Jim Belushi asked her about the book, and she says it's about kind of if it was possible to go back and kind of yeah. change your life if you're running away. Nod, nod, wink, wink. Nod, nod, exactly. <laughs> but then, of course, she goes, she has to go back, or, she, yeah, she's made to go back, and then things just get worse, and it gets worse, and, I mean, every time just things get more and more crazy. I mean, it's uh, like a butterfly effect, isn't it, almost, where, you know, she does one one little change, and it just, yeah, the, the, then a chain of events. I think it's quite noticeable that, so you have a you have a very strong female lead, which is quite... Uh, maybe slightly unusual for the '90s um, for these kind of films, and she 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 plays it perfectly well. It's not someone she's not someone I really know that well. I think that probably the named people in this are obviously Jim Belushi, um, Shannon Worry, and Frank Whaley, and then of course is M- Emmett Walsh who's in there as well. Who's always he's just he's such great. You yeah, know, yeah. he's a he's a great character actor. No, as you say, it is fun. It's dumb fun. It was wise not to go too deep into the into the science fiction. I mean, you know, it's time travel. It, you know, you don't want to. You know, you're traveling back in time. That's that's it, 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 that's all you need to know. It doesn't really matter how the machine works. It is literally just a platform that's then sort of surrounded by swirling cameras and lightning and things like that. Um, it doesn't really make a lot of sense, but you know. But at least you know it does sort of. It, that beginning scene does set it all up and tells you exactly what you need to know uh, about how you know anyone who goes back will remember what what's happened, whereas anyone else won't. You know, and nothing will have changed for them. And that, of course, makes an interesting dynamic later on when other people start to use the time machine and remember things, but different. You know, they don't travel back at the same time, so they don't remember as much as other people. You know, I don't want to go too much on about it because then it, it will spoil it if you haven't seen it. But um, that was quite an interesting dynamic, I thought. It is a dumb film where, you know, you have to kind of suspend your disbelief. But there were some things where my disbelief needed to be suspended too much. <laughs> like the whole, you know, him alone completely in this this yeah. facility. Yeah. <laughs> just, just not believable in any way. And the ease in which she climbed over this fence and got to it. And he just lets her in. Any old, you know, just... Yeah, just come in, you know, into this this government facility that no one's supposed to know about. I love how I love how the kind of the real the realism is more unbelievable than the science fiction in this film. Yeah, you know, the, the, yeah, yes. yeah. I mean, you're right. It's I can go of, with the time travel stuff. Yeah, that's fine. Exactly. But it's like alone in a facility. That, no, <laughs> climbing over that fence. No, <laughs> you know, there's no cameras. There's no guards. There's no nothing. I mean that that too. It kind of because. It, like I said, and that's how I feel. I mean, obviously, any time machine film, any time travel film, the time machine obviously is there to, like I said, facilitate the plot. Mm. Obviously, that's it. But in this, it feels... I mean, it's more about the action stuff. It's more... I mean, there's yeah. loads of... You know, outside of the time travel element, there's loads of, 
you know, if, if you're a fan of like car chase movies or mm. cars, you know, cars flipping through the air and doing all those crazy stunts, uh, which I'm a big fan of anyway. I mean, just you know, watching a car flip through the air and crash is just so cool. It just looks great. It doesn't matter if the film's terrible or not. It just looks cool. I've always kind of thought in cinema, you know, cars look great on screen. Trains look great on screen. Horses look... Those three things look awesome on screen. And when cars are crashing and spinning through the air, they look great. The, the time travel, obviously it's a time travel film, so that's its kind of mechanic, is to, for these people to keep going back and, and try and change the change what's happened. But yeah, the whole... The way she finds it is so like... Huh? <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, later, the second time, it kind of... It's almost like it happens... The t- it's time that she takes to get there suddenly changes, mm. which often happens in these films. Yeah. Because, yeah. uh, you know, you get through, you, you kind of go through, because you, you're like, oh, oh, I know what's happened now. So everything kind of, you go through things quicker because you know what's happening. Yeah, yeah. But then you still manage to get to the same point as everyone else. And it's like, huh? Uh, so, yeah, I mean, there's a lot in here that, that, that just, you just kind of have to, it's a trashy film. What it, I tell yeah. you what it feels like to me. It feels like a, like a long episode of The Twilight Zone. It, it's got mm. that, that kind of, TV science fiction, or even yeah. um, actually maybe, you know, you remember the Outer Limits in the nineties? They did a nineties mm. a, a version of the Outer Limits, which was more adult. I think this is more yeah. like the Outer Limits because those those episodes were quite. I mean, I know they're both science fiction, but this maybe feels more like Outer Limits to me than than even Twilight. Twilight Zone was always a bit tongue in cheek and a bit it was kind of dark humor in inside of it. Whereas Outer Limits was was more adult and a bit more gripping and yeah, yeah. and uh, I think this feels like a, a kind of an overlong science fiction TV show kind of thing. But uh, you know, I think if if you like dumb fun and you don't want to, you know, time crimes. It did remind me a lot of time crimes. I think possibly the lone person in a laboratory, and he keeps going back, doesn't need to try and do things differently I think doesn't it and in that too you you have to kind of get in something in that film you have to get in this kind of vat um, to go back in time which is a little bit similar to what's going on in this film but that's maybe there's maybe a bit more on the science in that film yeah that's not in this film so I think you know if you you know I mean Jim Belushi's great I mean he puts on this I don't know if it's a very good Texas accent because I'm not from <laughs> Texas but it, to me it sounds all right yes um, and he's clearly relishing being the bad guy and he's a you know yeah, yeah. He's, he's this bad temper you know very quick fuse he snaps like that He's loving kind of, you know... Totally chewing the scenery. Chewing the scenery at every moment. And, and he's always great to watch. You know, I was always a big fan of um, Red Heat with, yeah. you know, Schwarzenegger and Belushi are great together. It is one of these films where there's just massive long stretches of road in the desert. And, you know, often these films do look great. Um, like, you know, we mentioned The Hitcher earlier and that's another gorgeous looking film where, you know, you think, oh, it's just, just sand and bushes and road and that. But, you know, there's great vistas on display uh, I mean obviously it's set in Texas but it was actually filmed in California I mean I couldn't tell the difference I guess if you are native to either of those places maybe you'd be able to tell <laughs> but yeah it looks you know it looks great and there's some some good scenery on display yeah and in fact talking about the hitcher the director who hasn't had a huge amount of films in his career and not many known ones he he made the sequel to the hitcher uh, and the sequel to joyride so he's kind of likes his cars in his films but he's not really a name I knew. He made a film called Bats as well, which is a name I know, but I've never seen. So I think he's kind of like a straight straight to video type director, which is which is absolutely fine. He's had some kind of a career, and you know it's it's abs- it's not it's fine. This film it's 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 a bit of fun, you know if you if you've got it, uh, which we, well, you do, you bought it, didn't you? Yeah, I bought. Yeah, I got a second hand copy of Amazon. Yeah, it's um, been released by eighty eight films. No extras, unfortunately, apart from some trailers, I think, for other films. But I want to steal's gallery, according to the box. Yeah, it's you know it's perfectly fine. I think there did seem to be like some dirt and speckles yeah, and things on the picture, but yeah. um, but it wasn't too bad for the most part. In the states, it was released by Kino Lorber. I assume that uses the same master. I'm not sure, um, but again, no extras on that. Um, and I think it's been released in Germany as well. Not particularly tough to come by, and obviously it's DVDs as well, if you prefer. Yeah, so just it's a, just a fun little film. As long as you don't expect too much from it, go in with perhaps lowered expectations, and you you know just enjoy the ride.
a lot of these films you can you can pick apart the science quite a yeah. lot you know especially if they do I mean it's hard to get right because obviously it's, it's it's never happened and it's probably not likely to happen but you know a lot of these films there is a there is a mechanic of time machine of time travel and obviously you know we spoke briefly last year uh, last time about the grandfather paradox which of course comes up in many of these films but I think what's quite good about this film is it's, it's kind of non-existent so there's not really you don't sit there no picking it apart because I mean a lot of it doesn't make a lot of sense actually and I I did a couple of times find myself thinking well when did he what where are we because obviously (laughs) things happen later but it's not one of those films that you really sit there and pick it apart in too many ways because it's just a silly kind of action film and you can have you can just sit there and enjoy it uh, if if you if you have it you know thinking about it of course a lot of times in these time travel films is like oh you do, you know don't contact yourself don't meet yourself because the you know the universal implode or whatever yeah. whereas in this one that doesn't seem to be possible because no. when you travel back in time you simply go back into your into your body rather than being another you you're not it's like you're not physically traveling back in time it's like you are time is being rewound rather and then you find yourself back where you were you know 20 minutes or half an hour or whatever time they've selected um so it it, like that it is more like a time loop where there's just one of you and you just it just rewinds but yeah i mean you know it, while there isn't a lot of science in it what is there does make sense for the most part i think <laughs> it's just the, just the, everything else is a little bit silly so that was retroactive and as always if you enjoyed the video let us know in the comments below hit the subscribe button there and don't forget to push the bell for notifications there's other videos to check out over here come and find us on twitter facebook instagram and letterboxd and join us again next week for another video